Here we have a pretty picturesque looking problem from 2020 Berkeley Integration B. And in case you want to try this out on your own, the participants to this competition had four minutes, four minutes to complete this problem correctly. So if you want to try this out on your own, do pause the video, maybe time yourself and see if you can get the answer in four minutes. Now, granted, this video is probably going to be longer than four minutes because we are going to try to elaborate on kind of the thought process that you may have as we are attempting this. But nonetheless, four minutes is a pretty short time. You have to be efficient and skilled to get it within the four minutes, I believe. Anyway, let's, let's start thinking about how we're going to attempt this question. One of the first things that may strike you when you look at this problem is that it seems to be intimately connected to what's known as the Gaussian integral. So the Gaussian integral, if you're not familiar with it, is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative u squared du, and this is well known to evaluate to square root of pi. This is probably one of those integrals that the participants were assumed to know beforehand going into this integration b, and we will take this integral for granted. But you can easily look up multiple proofs of this online. Now, knowing this, we may be prompted to try to turn the exponent of our integrand into something that's very close to u squared. Because currently, we have e to the negative x squared plus 1 over x squared. And if we can convert this to e to the negative u squared, and if we can somehow manage to generate the appropriate du outside, then we can connect this to the Gaussian integral. And there actually seems to be a way of trying to move forward with this idea. Because we have two candidates for u. We can try u equals to x plus 1 over x, and we can try u equals to x minus 1 over x. When we square the former, when we square x plus 1 over x, we get x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2. And when we square this one, uh, we get x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 2. And since we can take out the constant factors, so if we have something like e to the negative 2, we can take that outside of the integral, so we can actually generate this u squared, this negative u squared in the exponent. That's beautiful, but of course there is a complication. How do we, how do we deal with du? We gotta make sure we have u prime dx as well. Huh, I mean this is still a starting point, so why don't we actually try making this u equals to x plus 1 over x and see what happens. So in this case, our integral becomes integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x plus 1 over x squared. And to this, to this we want to take away 2. Because when we square this, we get 2 more than what we had before. So we're going to take away 2, and we are going to write dx. So this is using the first u. And this, of course, becomes integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative our desired u dx and when we take out e to the negative negative 2 that's going to become e squared coming out outside. But now we're stuck. How do we proceed? Well, whenever we're stuck and we want to transform the integrand into something manageable or something that's related to the one before, we want to think about what the natural substitution may be. Certainly doing u equals to Going back up, certainly doing u equals to x plus 1 over x right away here is, is going to turn out to be very messy. Because, I mean, how, what is dx going to become? So that's probably not what we want to do at first. Let's try making another u substitution before. And I think the natural one to try out here, because we have x and 1 over x, we can try out u equals to 1 over x as the substitution. Partly because doing so is going to respect what we have in the exponent, the exponent is going to stay the same upon the substitution. And the second thing, and this may be more important and more subtle, is that when we make this transformation, we're going to get this u prime or derivative of 1 over x outside, and that's pretty related to derivative of x plus 1 over x. So we can make a bunch of connections there. So let's go ahead with the substitution, but, but we can't. We actually can't apply the substitution right away, because if we do so, Going from x equals to negative infinity to x equals to infinity is going to become u going from when x is approaching negative infinity or infinity, that's going to be u going from 0 to 0. And the integral becomes 0? Well, that, that, that makes no sense. Because uh, what we have in the integrand is strictly positive no matter what x you plug in. So something is wrong here. The reason this doesn't work out right away is because when we have an integral from negative infinity to infinity, that 
by definition, is integral from negative infinity to zero plus integral from zero to infinity. So if we are trying to make a substitution such as u equals to one over x, we technically should apply it individually to this one and then this one. Certainly, if the substitution is going to work in a way that's consistent, perhaps, between the two separate integrals, then you can apply it to negative infinity to infinity right away. But in this case, we should split it before. And there's an easy way of doing so, because we have an even integrand. When we change x to negative x in the integral, that's simply going to take out negative 1 squared outside, so it's not going to affect the integral at all. That's telling us that this integral is actually 2 times integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x plus 1 over x squared dx. So now let's apply the substitution u equals to 1 over x, and we get. So by applying the substitution, we get 2e squared. And now our integral is going to be from infinity to 0, because as x approaches 0 from the right, our u is going to blow up to infinity. And as our x increases without bound, our u is going to become close to 0. And since x is 1 over u, we know our exponent is going to become negative 1 over u plus u. So we still have u plus 1 over u squared. And our dx is going to become negative 1 over u squared du. So we have negative 1 over u squared du outside. Just to make the integral more consistent to the one before going from 0 to infinity, let us simply take out this negative sign here and simply switch the bounds. So let's make this go from 0 to infinity as well. To make our integral even more similar to the one that came before, we can just simply replace u with x. The reason we can do so is because it doesn't really matter if we have a u-axis or the x-axis, as long as the function in terms of each variable is the same. If we're trying to find the area under u squared from 0 to 1, that's the same as the area under x squared from 0 to 1. So we can replace every u with x. Now realize, the derivative of x is 1, and we have times 1 here, and the derivative of 1 over x, that's negative 1 over x squared, but we have something very close to that here. So something that we are prompted to at least try out is add up the two integrals that we have right here. So let's call this integral i, which is what we want to find, and let's call this i as well. If we add them up, we get 2i is 2e squared times integral from 0 to infinity of our exponential times 1 plus 1 over x squared dx. Now, we are so close, we are so close, because if this thing was 1 minus 1 over x squared, then we have a really beautiful u substitution that we can employ. Because we can let this thing be u, and we would have u prime dx outside. That's perfect. But we don't have that, because the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared, not plus 1 over x squared. Ah, <sighs> Wait a bit, wait a bit, let's go back up. I feel like there were two different candidates that we had for the final u to begin with. Our candidates were x plus 1 over x and x minus 1 over x. And doing x plus 1 over x doesn't quite work. So what's the natural thing to try? Let's try x minus 1 over x. Well, in this case, let's see how everything changes. So we're trying our second choice now. Okay, first, since we gotta cancel out the negative 2, we're going to have plus 2 here. And of course, we should have a minus 1 over x. Which means when we take out e to the negative plus 2, we should actually have e to the negative 2 outside. Let's keep on doing this. Let's go down. And here I made the appropriate changes. Something to realize is that the integrand is still even, so we can still take out 2 like this. One other thing to realize is that when we make the substitution u equals to 1 over x, the exponential part still stays the same, because x minus 1 over x squared and 1 over x minus x squared are the same. So we can simply switch this out. And we get that i is equal to two different things. Let's now find the 2i. So 2i is going to be 2 over e squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of our exponential. Now with the minus sign. And we're going to have 1 plus 1 over x squared dx. And finally, we seem to have something that works perfectly. So now if we let u be x minus 1 over x, we certainly have u prime outside. So let's finish this up. So let's say u is equal to x minus 1 over x. And let's see how our integral changes. So we wish to find i. So let us just simply cancel out the 2's. So we have 1 over e squared times integral of when x is getting close to 0, this thing is going to blow up to negative infinity. 
And as x gets very, very large, this thing is going to dominate. So we're going to have an integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative u squared du. And we have seen this before. This is precisely the Gaussian integral evaluating to square root of pi. So we see that our answer is square root of pi over e squared. We have shown that this is square root of pi over e squared, although not within the 4 minute time frame. I hope you enjoyed the video.